Hello fellow coffee botherers. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this, the new Gadget Espresso. And I'm going to be answering the controversial question, have Gadget done it? Have they created the best home espresso machine at this price point for both normal users and home baristas? Let's find out. So the Gadget Espresso isn't new. In fact, it was released in the 80s and this is what it looked like. We can only show you a photo as they're quite rare. I've been trying to get older one for ages as I think they look ace, a bit like 80s Ferraris. But this isn't the original espresso. That was a single boiler machine with a tiny aluminium boiler. This is a thermoblock machine with a PID, which I'll explain shortly. They've just called it espresso because they had that name going spare, I think. Let me know in the comments what you'd have named it. And the name espresso machine mc espresso machine face is not allowed. Let's look at the specs. It's very compact, as you can see, 20 centimetres wide, 30 centimetres tall, and 25.5 centimetres deep. It has a 1.2 litre side loading water tank, which is a smart move. You don't need to access the back of the machine to remove it. It has the same 1900 watt stainless steel thermoblock as the Gadget Carezza. It has a PID, a temperature controller, which we'll come back to. 53 millimeter group, so obviously a 53 mil porter filter. And this is a standard porter filter that comes with pressurized baskets. And we'll come back to this shortly too. A very simple interface, three buttons, on, off, espresso, steam, and the steam knob on the side. Warm up time is about 25 seconds. Steam ready time from pressing the steam button is also about 25 seconds. There is an auto off on this machine, but it's 30 minutes, not nine minutes as with the Carezza. A Panarello steam wand with a couple of surprises, more on that shortly too. The drip tray capacity is about 275 millilitres, which is pretty good for a small machine, but it's chunky. So the max cup height is only about 7.5 centimetres. But slide it out and you have about 10 centimetres and a nice flat surface for brew scales. There's no solenoid, so you can use it without the drip tray, as there's no exit into the drip tray from the machine. Let's talk about the things I really like about this machine. First and foremost, the PID. The issue with most of the cheaper and similarly priced options, and some of the more expensive options too, is temperature instability. Yes, you can get around this with temperature surfing, but having a PID to keep the brew temperature more stable just makes perfect sense. Whether you're getting into the home barista hobby, learning to dial in with freshly roasted, freshly ground coffee beans, or you just want to be able to make your own espresso-based coffees at home with supermarket beans, pre-ground coffee or ESE pods, the addition of the PID is going to make things far easier. To get a machine at this price with a PID is unheard of. And I know some people will say, oh, it's not going to be an amazing PID for that price. It's not going to produce perfect temperature stability. And that's probably right, but it's going to be better for temperature stability than a machine without a PID. The porter filter. Unlike most of the other similarly priced and cheaper machines, it's not a pressurized porter filter. It's a standard porter filter with a pressurized basket. So if you're using pre-ground coffee, or if you're going to use it with something like the Gadget MD15, and you can get it bundled with the MD15, with supermarket coffee beans, meaning not freshly roasted beans, you can just use the provided baskets. But if you want to use freshly roasted beans with an espresso capable grinder, you can get a standard basket and slap it in the stock porter filter. And for this kind of price point, the porter filter is the nicest I've seen. It feels quite nice in the hand, it's quite well balanced, and it has a bit of character to it with the square end to the handle. I'm not a fan of stubby spouts, I prefer a proper metal splitter, but if you want that, or a bottomless, the 53mm Adesia Espress porter filters work fine, and they're about £30. The dose. Other similar price machines tend to have baskets that struggle to take a fairly standard dose. For a double shot, some of these machines will take 14 to 15 grams, maybe 16 at a push. It will depend on the grind size and the coffee you're using, but using the standard stock baskets that you can get for the Gadget Carezza, I've found it'll work well with about an 18 gram dose. As I've said, this will depend on grind size, so you might find it's more like 15 or 16 with pre-ground coffee in the pressurized baskets, depending on the grind. So for me, these are the three most impressive things about this machine. It doesn't end there though, this little machine has various other little tricks up its sleeve. Steaming milk. If you saw my video on the Carezza, you'll know I was really taken by the steam wand, and this has the same wand. It's a Panarello wand, the same kind of wand you'll find on most similarly priced home espresso machines, and they're great for old school, big bubbled, stiff foam cappuccino, and it does that very well, as a 1900 watt thermoblock delivers plenty of steam power. But slide it off and slide off the plastic connector, and the pipe underneath is longer than most, and it's rounded at the end into a single hole. And it spins 360 degrees, so you have plenty of flexibility in steaming position. But not only that, the steam wand is articulated, mean it'll pull out from the machine like this, which gives you a lot more flexibility over steaming position versus most similarly priced options. 
thanks to the 1900 watt thermal block, you actually have quite a decent steam power, as I've mentioned, but it's also constant. You won't run out of steam. You can just keep steaming pretty much until you run out of water in the tank. Pre-infusion. It has what Gadget call pre-brewing or pre-infusion. It's not low pressure pre-infusion that you'll find on the Sage or Breville machines that mimics true line pressure pre-infusion. Instead, it's about 15 mil of water introduced into the puck of coffee at full pressure. A two second pause and then it continues with the shot. Memo function. This is Gadget's name for their reprogrammable shot button. What this means is that while you're dialing in, you can press and hold the shot button, take your finger off the shot button when you've got your desired shot volume, and it'll automatically save that shot time. You can stop it early though if you need to by pressing the shot button again, and if you want to disable the memo button, then just press the button to start and press it again to stop. Just press and hold the on-off button for a few seconds, and it'll flash at you to tell you that the memo function is off. ESE pods. For anyone who wants to use ESE pods, it's really simple. Just use this basket and drop this piece on top of the pod. Hot water. It'll dispense hot water via the steam one just by opening the steam knob without pressing the steam button. Drip tray. Slide out the chunky drip tray and you have more space for bigger cups or for using brew scales. And just to be ridiculous, we'll show footage of using scales that cost more than the machine. And I really like the look and feel of it. It's made in Italy and I think it shows. Most of the cheap machines just tend to look and feel a bit thrown together, a little bit rough around the edges. This doesn't. Yes, it's plastic fantastic. It's mainly ABS plastic, the same stuff Lego is made of, or Legos if you're American, which is weird. You say Legos, we say Lego, but we say maths, you say math. We say gadget, you say gadget. Oh wait, that's the same. <laughs> This is a style, so it's pretty much all plastic. The deluxe version is just slightly more money, and for that you get a metal cup warmer with metal rails and a metal drip tray cover. There's also the Evolution version, which isn't currently available in the UK, but this just seems to be the deluxe version with slightly different colour accents. Let's talk about the negatives, the things I'm not too keen on. Actually, I don't think most of these are all that fair to bring up, remembering the price, but I will anyway in case my enthusiasm for this machine leads people to thinking it's something it isn't, meaning perfect. Because there really isn't such a thing as a perfect espresso machine, and if there is, there'd be a few zeros at the end of the price tag. The main thing for me is the water pressure. As with the similarly priced machines, it has a 15 bar vibration pump, and I've not been able to test it, but I think there's probably an OPV set to about 13 or 14 bars. This isn't a huge deal, the classic is the same without modding, a 9 bar OPV just makes life a bit easier when you're trying to dial in using standard baskets. But also the water is sprayed into the basket with quite a bit of force, so the puck does get some disturbance, so you'll often find a bit of a crater gouged into the puck. You can easily overcome this though with a 53mm puck screen. The water then hits the screen and disperses through that rather than hitting the coffee at full force. You can't adjust the PID, and to be fair, that would be asking a lot at this price point. You can't adjust the temperature on the Bambino Plus or the Gadget Classic either, which are at least double the cost. I'd prefer it if it came with the standard basket in the box so people don't have to buy anything extra. 53mm baskets are available and relatively inexpensive, but I just think it would have been so much more helpful for them to bundle it with the standard basket too, and it wouldn't have cost them much to do that. You do have to run water through the steam wand after steaming milk to cool the water heater back down if you're going to make another coffee straight away. I'd prefer it to have an automatic internal flush as Sage or Breville machines do in order to cool the boiler. I do understand why they haven't done that, there are a few reasons that I won't bore you with, and it's easy, you just do this. But some people won't. They won't realise they have to, so they won't get the benefit of the PID, as a second shot will be at a higher brew temperature if they're making another shot immediately after steaming milk and they don't cool down the thermal block. And that's it really, there's not a lot to say negatively about this machine. I think this is an amazing little machine for the price, both for beginner home baristas and normal coffee drinkers just looking for a low priced home espresso machine. How does this compare to the Gadget Classic? The Classic is on a completely different level to this, the very different machines for different people. And with a bit of modding, the Gadget Classic is raised to an even higher level and ends up being a heck of a lot of machine for the money. But if you're just looking for an easy to use espresso machine that will give you relatively good consistent espresso and good constant steam power, then I think some people will probably have a nicer time using this than the Classic. It warms up quicker, it has more features, it's more user friendly, it has a similar steam power but constant because of the thermoblock heater. I think some normal coffee machine users will get on better with this than with the classic, and it's about half the price. 
Will it represent as good long-term value as a classic though? Probably not. The classic is built like a tank. It can last for decades. I don't think there are many machines that are as good for long-term value as a classic is. What about the likes of the Sage or Breville Bambino? It's about £130 cheaper than the Bambino, so probably not a very fair comparison, but it's the closest I think Gadget have come to the user-friendliness of the Sage machines. Although it's not quite there. They're really different machines for different people. Gadget are usually more utilitarian workhorse machines. Sage machines focus a lot more on creature comforts, ease of use and convenience. The main thing in terms of cup quality though is the low pressure pre-infusion and 9 bar OPV, but again it's not really a fair comparison given the price difference. For me though, the machines this really competes with are the likes of the DeLonghi Dedica and the Smeg ECF-01. The Dedica I think has been the best machine at this price for quite some time, and the Smeg has done very well at that price point for people who are a bit more interested in design. They're spookily similar machines internally by the way, the Smeg and the Dedica, so in my opinion the only reason to pay more for the Smeg is if you like the design enough to pay extra for it. I think this looks better than either of them, although beauty is in the eye of the beholder of course. But as far as I'm concerned, in terms of espresso quality and consistency and ease of use for normal coffee drinkers or home baristas, the Gadget Espresso for a similar price gives you way more bang for your buck. So do I think Gadget have done it? Created the best machine on the market at this price point? Definitely. At least at the price it's been released at in the UK, and I'll put a link in the description. It'll be an affiliate link, so if you buy one using my link, I'll buy an aforementioned 80s Ferrari. If you disagree, if you think there's any other sub £200 machine that this doesn't outcompete, let me know in the comments and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison, if it's a machine I can get hold of in the UK. If I wanted to buy a traditional Portafilter espresso machine now, and I wanted to spend about £200, this is what I'd be buying. If I've said a few things during this video that confused you, things like dialing in, shot time, dose, shot volume, watch the video that will pop up here shortly to learn more about that. Baby's dad from Dirty Dancing was the voice of Lumiere, the candlestick in Beauty and the Beast, the early 90s one, I mean, not the recent one with Hermione Granger. And that has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but if you want to click the like button, be our, our guest. guest. Wow! Thank you very much for watching, and if you think no one should put coffee in the corner and you enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye! Welcome to your family. <laughs>